Hi, I'm David Stewart. I'm part of the Open Source Technology Center at Intel, and I work on optimizing Open Solaris for our Xeon architecture. We really want to make sure that Xeon is the best platform that you can choose to run Open Solaris on. And what I want to try and do is take a, just a couple minutes to tell you about why we're so excited about working on Open Solaris on Xeon, and what are some of the projects we're working on here, and then how you as a developer can take advantage of those things as you do your work. Now, you know, why it's really about, you know, Solaris as a great choice for those uh, working in enterprise computing due to its great performance and scalability. Um, it's a highly stable and compatible platform. And, you know, Intel recognizes this, and we really want to bring the best of the Intel uh, technology development that we're doing and bring that to the Solaris community so that we can really uh, work together to make uh, some phenomenal systems. So, you know, the other thing is that since it's open Solaris and it's really an open source community now, we feel like this is uh, really in, in line with a lot of the things that we're trying to do um, to work with the community and to build a, an overall community. Open source is very important to us because, you know, we feel like this is the way that, you know, kind of technology is advancing these days is relative to, to open source. So we feel like it's a very important thing to, you know, do as part of our overall open source efforts. So uh, what I'd like to do is tell you a few things we're actually working on now so you can get a flavor for it. Um, really with our uh, new, brand new CPUs when they come out, one of the things that we do is we boot Solaris on them to make sure that Solaris will work. So that's kind of that power on activity that we do. Uh, we also do validation, and part of our, our validation is making sure that Solaris will uh, run every time we have a new CPU that comes out of the overall, uh, out of the fabs. We're also doing a lot of work with our CPU architects who are designing and, and dreaming the next generation of CPUs. So one of the things we're doing with them is sharing with them how Solaris works so that the new processor architectures will make best use of Solaris. Um, we also have this philosophy of new instructions, and this is where new CPUs, we look at uh, what are the ways in which uh, programmers, developers use um, the, the processor, and a lot of times we'll, we'll take those common usages and make them into new instructions. Well, what we're doing with that is we're actually um, optimizing the core primitive routines of the operating system with those new instructions. And this really allows you to make sure that as you just do your normal programming job, you can actually uh, get great acceleration and great performance. Um, we also have a variety of new technologies that we're introducing with our new processor. So every time there's a new processor generation, you know, we look at, at different architectural technology directions we want to go in, and we're adapting Open Solaris to those things. Some of the you know, most uh, powerful ones are you know, virtualization technology, IO acceleration technology, some examples of, of work that we're doing. We also do a lot of work with power with Open Solaris because we sort of have a strong philosophy that you know, we want to reduce the use of power so we can take care of the planet uh, for future generations. So we want to make sure that we um, lower the power utilization. We're designing great CPUs that uh, take less power, but we need to adapt the operating system to make sure it's making best use of the hardware in that space. So there's a lot of work we're doing there. And then the area of uh, enterprise computing, uh, you really want to make sure you maximize the reliability, availability, and serviceability, or the RAS features of any kind of operating system. And uh, for uh, Open Solaris, uh, there's the fault management architecture, or FMA. They also refer to it as a predictive self-healing. Well, this is a great uh, way to you know, adapt to the Intel RAS features that are there. So we're doing work in FMA to adapt to the RAS features that are in Xeon to, to really improve on that enterprise computing uh, capability. And finally, in the area of drivers, we have a lot of work going on there because, you know, frankly, you don't want to take your you know, server along with you on an airplane to develop code, right? You're going to develop on a laptop, so you want to make sure you have great laptop graphics, make sure you have wireless, uh, and uh, so we're, we're doing a lot of work with the dri device drivers as well. So, kind of, you know, how do you take advantage of this as a developer? Well, I'd encourage you to go to, uh, you know, the uh, opensolaris.org site, you know, join and, and get involved with some of these uh, particular projects. We've got the Intel Platform Project where we're doing a lot of our, you know, new architecture work. Um, the Tesla Project is a, is a great community project to improve power utilization in the operating system. Uh, the FMA Project, of course, for RAS capabilities. Performance is an area where we're working on, again, with a performance optimization, addressing any issues or really with those uh, primitive instructions, uh, trying to make best use of it. There are various driver projects you can get involved in, and then there's a laptop community as well. Again, we really hope that you'll take advantage of, of this area and, and uh, as a community, work together with us so that we can together make Open Solaris on Xeon a, a great uh, platform for uh, the enterprise computing area.